obviously, too, who are interested in the assessments, who are interested in the value of the assessment. So what do you give to the clients who want to learn about their employees or the people who are there, they're developing? Well, I think clients ask us to coach and develop people, uh, not because we are going to assess them, although clearly they will get some information out of this process, but most of what we do is confidential. Yeah. What, they're, what they are uh, investing in is making sure that the people who are identified as being ready for more senior roles are one aware of what the next steps might look like. So quite often mid-career people have been focusing on execution, they have been leading smaller teams, they've been very focused on getting things done, they may not be as interested in or even thought about strategy, they may have not thought about what it would be like to manage larger teams, uh, how do they delegate, um, how they might question processes and how things are done. The more senior you become, there's more ambiguity, there's more need for uh, decision making on a, on a larger scale, more data, uh, they may need to delegate more, there isn't enough time to go around coaching people and telling people all the detail that they must do in all their roles. Yeah. And when you become more senior, you end up with direct reports who are themselves pretty experienced. Mm -hmm. So, so there's a, there is definitely a transition going on for people who are identified as high potential yeah. but need to make the next step. So I think most of our clients are investing in our coaching or our leadership development work to help the individuals themselves identify who am I, uh, how do I operate, what do I want next? How am I going to move to the next level? What's the gap between where I am now and where I need to be? Mm -hmm. And then self-owning the development to the next stage. And, and long gone is the day where the company tells you what the next step is and just sends you yeah. through a process. They're expecting individuals to identify for themselves what they need to do next and how they're going to move on. And we help them do that throughout through our coaching processes. Mm -hmm. But the data and the information we get from either psychometrics or from 360 uh, holds up a mirror to them. And in that process, they then begin to think, ah, okay, so the role of a senior leader is slightly different to the kind of role I'm doing right now. How do I get there? Yeah. So that's a really interesting point about the gaps too, because when you're looking at kind of personality or enduring traits, it's not something you can change. So you need to look at other things to change like behaviors or tactics to fill in those gaps. Yeah. So what does that look like? What do you, how do you work with people to fill in those gaps? Yeah, I, I mean, I see people's enduring personality traits as, as something they're not going to change radically. Yeah. However, they're not, it, there is no template. And I often say to people, there isn't some kind of definition um, and, and I think there is a danger that if you over rely on uh, either psychometrics or 360s or anything else, that people then begin to build their own self-limiting beliefs. I can't do this because I'm not this type. And I think people have got choices all the way to the end of their career about what they choose to do and how they choose to do it. Yeah. And in fact, they need to be open-minded around their behaviours and change. And I think that one of the important things is for people to understand the difference between behaviour which is how I operate, and my underlying personality. And you can actually change behaviours, you can develop behaviours, you can learn, and of course you add to the behavioural stuff a whole bunch of skills and experience. So a very, I often find very experienced people say, I learned this about myself at this point in my career. I learned that I didn't communicate very much, uh, that I was too reserved, that I didn't uh, take people with me. Uh, I tended to tell people what to do. And then I realized that was my natural style, mm -hmm. but actually uh, what I needed to do actually was to show more interest in people, was to listen to people, was to be more open and communicate regularly, and to gather ideas and then lead people on. And they learned that from experience. So I, I see an interplay between people's enduring personality and their experience. And by the time they get to their 40s and 50s and they've developed both, they are actually self-aware and that's why holding up the mirror helps mm -hmm. because people become more self-aware and they go actually that's right i am to this i might be to that but i can manage that so i, I always say to people you have choices you may say i am what i am i'm never going to change i am this type of personality and that's your choice and actually people can make other choices um, and they can actually operate in a slightly different way. So I think we're, we are in the process of giving people choice about their behaviour. Yeah. Um, and then it's up to them. 
Yeah, and usually there's a whole host of kind of skills and things you can develop, yeah. right? When we look at personality, like adjustment levels, yeah. people have enduring patterns and ways of dealing yeah. with stress, and that is kind of biologically, yeah. neurologically hardwired. Yeah. But stress management techniques are completely yeah. separate. Absolutely. So you can learn all sorts of techniques yeah. and tools to deal with the stress, even if you've got a kind of fairly consistent pattern yeah. of um, relating to it. And sometimes it's contextual. I mean, I, I often say, imagine if, um, uh, Winston Churchill had done a personality profile, um, whether it be Hogan, Southern Holdsworth, HPTI. Yeah. Uh, what would it have said about Winston Churchill? And, and, and um, uh, I suspect, you know, if he'd gone through the average assessment centre, a graduate program, Winston Churchill wouldn't have got through. Yeah. So I think I think it's interesting. People have choices, and there is a context. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's you know we know that if the Second World War hadn't come along, Winston Churchill would have been a prominent politician of a certain period, mm -hmm. but the part we all know him for would never have happened. So I think, I think in business it's the same. You have people's personality, they have some traits, and they, they are clearly important to them. They have experience, and then they have a context. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that context, they have some choices to make. And so it, it's certainly not a simple matter um, for individuals to be successful or to be leaders or to, you know, there, there, there could be great leaders who are in the wrong environment, yeah. um, uh, in the wrong context. So what we're in the, uh, I think the business of is giving people uh, more self-awareness, uh, helping them develop their skills, uh, helping them understand their own motivation and why they're doing what they're doing. And then ultimately they are then put into an environment where they have a choice about what they need to do to be successful for them in the business. Mm -hmm. And s statistically, we're trying to give them the best chance of success. Yeah. There is no guarantee. Mm -hmm. Some people will be pretty good and still not be successful, yeah. and other people might be lucky. So the world is quite complex, but give them the information, yeah. let them understand who they are and how they're operating and, and the choices they need to make. Mm -hmm. And then you're in much better position you'd be if you just let people randomly yeah. make choices without thinking about it. Yeah, so kind of decision making. Mm -hmm.